Hi everybody, welcome to GT Coding. In this video, I'll show you how to create this contact form using Next.js and Tailwind CSS. And we will store the data that we get from this contact form into a MongoDB database. And uh, let me show you how it works. So here we can see we have this uh, contact form over here and we also have some input validation. So if I click on this uh, send button, here we can see that we have these error messages. It says name is required, email is required and message is required. So let's go ahead and add a name. So I'll just type John and let's add an email. So I'll just type John at email.com and let's type great website. And now let's go ahead and click on send. And now we can see we have this uh, message saying message was sent successfully. So let's go to the MongoDB database and let's refresh this page. And here we can see that we have the data, we have the name, we have the email and the message. And we also have the date when the message was sent. Now we have some more input validation over here. So if I just type a single character for the name and if I click on send, we can see that the name must be larger than two characters. And we also have a max limit for the name. So if I just add some random value and if I click on send, we can see that it says the name must be less than 50 characters. So you can add all these input validations over here. So let's add a real name. And if I just add some random email ID, and if I click on send, we can see that it says invalid email address. So we also have the validation for the email address. So we need to add a valid email address over here. And now if we type awesome website in the message and let's click on send. And now we can see that the message was sent. And let's go back to MongoDB. And let's refresh this page. And now if you scroll down here, we can see that we have the second message and all the details are displayed over here. So this is how this contact form works. Now let's start with the code. So let's get started. All right, so here I have created this folder called contact us and I just opened it with VS code. Now let's go ahead and start the terminal. So let's click on view and let's click on terminal. And let's start by writing this uh, command. Let's tap npx create next app at latest. Now before executing this command, you need to have Node.js installed on your system. So if you haven't installed Node.js, you can just go to the official website of Node.js and follow the instructions and install it on your system. And once you've done that, you can just go ahead and tap npx create next app at latest and let's press enter. Now for the name of the app, I'll just type dot because we want to create the app inside this current directory. So let's press enter. And for TypeScript, I'll just select no and eslint yes and tailwind yes and no for source directory and uh, app router yes. And I'll just select the default import alias. Right here we can see that the Next.js app has been created. Now let's install the package called mongoose to connect with our database. So let's tap npm i mongoose and let's press enter. Alright mongoose also has been added to our app. So here we can see mongoose is displayed over here in the package.json file. Alright now let's go ahead and set up mongodb. So you can just search for MongoDB Atlas and uh, create a free account. And once you create the free account, you may need to create a cluster. And after that, you can go ahead and create a new project. So you may find a screen something like this. You may not have any projects over here. So you can just click on new project. And we can just name the project over here. So I'll just name it contact form. And uh, let's click on next. And let's click on create project. And now we can see that the project has been created. Now let's click on build a database. And here you can select any of these options. I'll just select this free one right here. And uh, let's set all these options as default and let's click on create. All right now we need to create a username and password. So here for the username, I'll just type GT coding. And uh, this is the password which is auto generated. So I'll just copy this password from here. Let's copy it somewhere. So I'll just create an env file. So I'll just tap .env over here in our project. And I'll just paste the password over here. We will need it later. So let's go back. And uh, 
the username is set to GT coding. So let's click on create user. And now if you scroll down, we have these options. So for the IP address, I'll just set it to 0.0.0.0 forward slash zero so that we can access this database from anywhere. And let's click on add entry. And now let's go ahead and click on finish and close. And let's click on go to databases. Right here we have our database. So let's go ahead and click on connect. And let's scroll down and here we have this option called MongoDB for VS Code. So let's select that. And let's copy this code from here. And let's go back to VS Code. And here let's create a variable. So this is basically the environment variable file. So you can add all the secret code over here. So I just type MongoDB URI. And let's set it equal to the code that we copied. And here instead of the password, we need to copy this password. So I'll just copy this. Or I'll just cut this from here and uh, let's remove this password. And uh, let's paste the password over here. And here we also need to specify the database. So I'll just call the database contact DB. Right now let's save this. And let's go back to our browser. And I'll just click on close. Right now the database has been set up. So let's go back to our VS Code. And uh, let's start with our app. So to start the app, you can just type npm run dev. And let's click on this URL, localhost 3000. And here we have our Next.js app. Now this is the default page that comes by Next.js. Now let's go back to our code and uh, let's reset everything. So let's go to the app folder. And let's go ahead and select page. And I'll just delete all of this from here. And for now, I just return a div and let's type home page. And uh, now let's go to the global.css file and let's delete all the CSS from here. I'll just keep the CSS for Tailwind CSS. Right now, let's go back to our website. And this is how it looks. Right now, let's start with the design of our app. So let's go to the page.js file and I'll just rename this to page.jsx. And let's go ahead and start by creating a heading. So let's create an H1 and uh, let's type contact us. After that we need to have a paragraph and here let's type please fill the form below. And now if we go back to our website, this is how it looks. Now let's go ahead and style it. Now we will use Tailwind CSS for styling this. So first of all, let's go to the container division and let's type class name and here let's type P4 for adding a padding. Let's type max width and uh, let's set it to 3xl. Now, if you want to see what styling is actually being added, you can just hover over this and you can find the actual CSS that is being added. Now, this CSS is being displayed over here because I have an extension called Tailwind CSS added to VS Code. So, you can just go over here to extensions and uh, you can just search for Tailwind CSS and you can just install this extension right here. And the next thing we will do is we'll just bring everything to the center. So let's tap MX auto and let's save this. And now we can see that everything is in the center and uh, we have the correct max width. Now let's go ahead and style this heading. So here let's tap class name and let's tap text 3XL and uh, let's set the font to bold. And uh, this is how it looks. Right now we need to create the actual contact form. So for that we'll create a component so let's go over here and let's create a folder called components. And in this we'll create a file called contact form.jsx. And uh, for now I'll just type export default function contact form. And let's return a div and let's type contact form. And uh, let's go back to the page.jsx file and let's import it over here. So let's type contact form. And it is automatically imported over here. And we can just remove this image import from here. Right now, let's go back to our design. And here we can see that contact form is displayed. Now let's create this contact form component. So let's go over here and uh, let's turn this div into a fragment. And uh, let's go ahead and create a form. So let's tap form and uh, I'll just remove the action. Now in this form, we need to have a div and in the div, we need to have the label and the input field. So 
let's create a label and uh, in the for I just type full name and here let's type full name and now let's create an input field and the type will be text and let's set the ID to full name and let's add a placeholder and let's type John Doe right now let's create another div and let's type label and for the HTML4 I'll just type email and here let's type email and let's create an input field and here let's type ID equals email and let's add a placeholder and let's type john at gmail.com but now let's create another div for the message so let's type div and let's type label and here let's type message and here let's type message and for the message let's create a text area so let's type text area and uh, for the ID I'll just type message and I'll just remove the calls and rows and for the placeholder let's type type your message here and here we can see all the elements are displayed now let's create a button so let's go outside this division and let's create a button and for the button we will have a text of send and here we'll set the type to submit now below the form let's go ahead and create an element for the error messages so let's create a div and uh, in that we'll create another div and here let's type error message for now right now let's go back to our uh, website and this is how it looks now let's go ahead and style this right, so let's go to the form element and here let's add some classes so let's type class name and I'll just move the browser to the right side right here first of all let's add a padding of top and bottom and let's set it to 4 and uh, let's set a margin top of 4 as well and uh, now let's add a border just for the top and now let's have flex for all the elements and uh, let's set the flex direction to column and uh, let's set a gap of 5 right now we need to add some styles to the input field and also the div now there are three divs over here and we have two input fields and a text area so we will add all the styles inside the global.css file so let's go to the global.css file and uh, here let's go ahead and uh, type form and in that the first div and uh, here we need to type apply to apply the tailwind css so let's type flex flex call and a gap of two and now let's style the input fields so let's type input and also the text area and let's type add apply and let's add a shadow of medium and uh, let's set the padding left and right to six and let's set the padding top and bottom to two and uh, let's set a border and uh, we'll set the border color to slate 300 right now let's go back to our contact form component and for the text area let's add a height so let's type class name and uh, let's set the height to 32 and now let's style the button so here for the button element let's type class name and let's set the background color to green 700 and uh, let's set a padding of 3 and let's set the text color to white and let's set the font to bold right now let's style the error messages so here for the container division let's type class name and uh, let's set the background color to slate 100 and let's set the display to flex and uh, flex call for flex direction of column and here for this div let's type class name and uh, let's set the text color to red 600 and let's set the padding left and right to 5 and padding top and bottom to 2 All right, that's it with the styling of our contact form and here for the label I'll just type your message right now let's start with the functionality so the first thing we need to do is we need to get all the data from these input fields so what we need to do is we need to create states for each of these input fields and in the states we will store the details so for that let's type const and uh, for the full name I'll just type full name and uh, let's type set full name 
and here let's tap equals use state and uh, by default we will set it to blank now when we are using use state we need to change this component into a client component so here we need to type use client and let's do the same for email so let's type const email and set email equals use state and by default it will be blank and then we have message so let's type message set message equals use state and blank but now what we need to do is uh, when we make changes to this input field we need to set the data to these uh, states so here for this input field let's go ahead and type on change and let's set it equal to an arrow function with a parameter and we'll just call it e and here let's type set full name and here let's type e.target.value now what this is going to do is uh, when we make changes to this input field it's going to store the value inside this input field which we are getting from e.target.value and we're going to store it inside this full name and then we'll set the value of this input field to the value from this full name so let's have value equals full name so let's do the same for all the other input fields so i'll just copy this and uh, let's paste it over here and here let's type set email and here also let's type email and let's do the same for the text area so here let's copy this and here let's type set message and here let's type message right now let's go ahead and create a function to handle the form submit so here let's create a function and i'll just call it handle submit and here in the form let's type on submit and let's set it equal to handle submit now here first of all let's prevent the default behavior which is reloading the browser so here let's type e and here let's type e dot prevent default and uh, now let's see whether the data is actually being added to the states so here let's console.log these states so let's type console dot log full name and uh, let's set it to full name and uh, then we have email and let's set it to email and here let's type message and let's type message over here All right now let's open the console so let's right click over here and uh, let's click on inspect and uh, let's go to the console and uh, let's add some data over here so let's type john and let's type john at gmail.com and uh, let's type great website for the message and let's click on send and now we can see all the details of the form are displayed over here so the data is actually being stored inside this state right now the next thing we need to do is we need to create the backend for this so for that let's go back to the file browser and let's go inside the app folder and let's create a folder called api and in that let's create a folder called contact and in contact let's create a new file called route.js and here we can add the code for the backend so first of all let's go back to the contact form and uh, here we will use fetch api so let's type const res for the response equals await fetch and here we need to add the url and uh, then we need to add an object and since we are using await let's go ahead and change this into an async function so let's type async over here and here for the url let's type api and in that we have a folder called contact so we can type it like this api forward slash contact and here we need to add some options so the first thing we need to do is set the method to post and then we need to set the headers so for the headers let's create an object and let's tap content type and let's set it to application json and then we need to add the body so let's tap body and let's set it equal to json dot stringify because we'll convert this data into json and here let's pass the full name the email and the message now from the api we will return a message so here let's type 
const and I'll just destructure the message. I'll just call it msg and let's tap await response dot json. Now let's also create a state for the message. So here let's type const error set error equals use state and by default we'll set it to an empty array and here I'll just type set error and let's set it to the message. Right now let's go to the route.js file and uh, let's start writing the code for this. So we need to create an async function. So let's type export async function and we need to set the method to post. So let's tap post and here we'll get a request. So I'll just tap req. Now let's go ahead and destructure the values from the request. So if we go back to the contact form, here we can see that we are sending full name, email and message. So here let's tap const and let's tap full name, email and message and let's get it from await request.json and let's go ahead and console.log it over here. So let's tap console.log and I think we can just copy the console log from here. So I'll just copy these and let's paste it over here. And let's also return a response from here. So let's tap return and let's tap next response and it is automatically imported over here. So let's tap dot JSON and here let's tap MSG because that's what we are expecting over here. And it is going to be an array. So let's go ahead and type array and here let's type hi from contact route. Right now let's go back to the contact form and uh, here I just console.log this error message as well. So let's type console.log error and it is this error state right here. Now let's go ahead and send some values over here. So let's type bill bill at gmail.com and my message and let's click on send and let's open the console. And here we can see we have the full name the email, the message and this return from the API. Now let's go to the terminal and uh, here we can see we have the full name, email and message. So everything is working all right. Now let's go ahead and start with MongoDB. So let's go to the file browser and uh, inside the app folder, let's create a folder called lib and in that we'll create a file called mongodb.js. And here we will write the code to connect to our MongoDB database. So let's go ahead and type const and uh, let's call it connect DB equals and let's create an async function and uh, let's export it over here. So let's type export default connect DB. Now let's add the code inside a try catch block. So here let's type catch and we'll catch for the errors. And uh, here we'll just console.log the errors. And here in this try block, let's type if and let's see whether the MongoDB connection is already established. So let's type mongoose and we'll import it from mongoose dot connection dot ready state. And let's see whether it is equal to zero. And if it is equal to zero, then the connection has not been established. So let's create a connection. So let's type await mongoose dot connect. And here we need to pass the MongoDB URI. So if you go back to the env file, here we can see that this is the MongoDB link. So let's pass it over here. So for that, you can just type process dot env dot and uh, let's copy the name from here. So let's copy this and uh, let's paste it over here. And now here, let's type console.log db connected. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to create a model. So for that let's go ahead and uh, let's create a folder called models and let's create a file called contact.js. So we'll create the model for contact. So let's tap const and uh, let's call it contact schema and let's set it equal to new schema and let's import it from mongoose and here the first field we need to have is full name. And for that, let's set the type to string and uh, let's set the required to true. And we'll also have an error message. So let's add it inside an array and let's type true. And for the message, let's type name 
is required and then let's type trim so it will just trim the spaces so let's set it to true and we'll set a min length and let's set the min length to 2 and uh, let's add a message so let's type name must be larger than two characters and let's type max length and uh, let's set it to 50 and let's type name must be lesser than 50 characters so this is for the full name now let's go ahead and create a field for email and uh, here let's type type and let's set it to string and this is also required so let's type required and let's set it to true and for the message let's type email is required and let's add a match for the email so here I'll just add a regular expression right here I have just copied this regular expression for email you can just search for this and you'll find it on the internet so for the message let's type invalid email address and then lastly we need to have message so let's type message and let's set it equal to type of string and this is also required so let's type required and let's set it to true and for the message let's type message is required and let's also add the date so let's type date and let's set it equal to type of date and let's set the default value to date dot now right now let's go ahead and type const and uh, let's call it contact and let's set it equal to mongoose and you need to import it over here dot models dot contact so we need to see whether the contact model is already available and if it is there you can just set it to the available model and if it is not there you can just type mongoose dot model and uh, here let's type contact and uh, here let's type contact schema which we are getting from here and uh, we need to change this to import so let's type import from mongoose right let's scroll down and uh, let's type export default contact right that's it with the contact model right now let's go to the route.js file and let's add the code for adding the data to the database so let's add it inside a try cache block and I'll just go ahead and uh, delete this and uh, here let's type await and let's import the connect DB from app lib and let's call the function and then we need to type await and contact let's import this as well which is the model dot create and here we need to pass the values so we need to pass the full name email and message and then we need to return next response dot json and if the contact form is submitted we can just type msg and let's set the message to message sent successfully and let's also set a success key to true now let's go ahead and add a catch and uh, let's add an error over here now here we need to see whether we have an error from the mongoose validation so i'll just delete this response from here and here let's type if error instance of and let's see whether it is an instance of mongoose dot error dot validation error and if it's a validation error then we need to loop through all the errors so let's create a variable called error list and let's create an empty array and let's type for let e in error and in that we will have an element called errors so from this errors we need to get the message so let's type error list dot push and uh, let's push the messages so let's type e dot message and let's go ahead and return the error list so let's type return next response dot json and here let's type msg and let's set it equal to error list or else we'll just go ahead and return next response dot json error now let's go ahead and see whether this works so let's go to our web page and let's add some details over here so let's type john john at gmail.com 
and uh, my message and let's go ahead and click on send now let's go to the MongoDB and uh, let's go ahead and uh, I'll just maximize this and uh, let's go to browse collections and here we can see we have this contact DB and in that we have the details so this is the message that we just sent let's send another message so I'll just type Bob and let's say it to Bob and here let's type great website and let's click on send and let's refresh this and here we can see we have the second message so the data is being stored inside MongoDB now let's go ahead and uh, display the error messages over here so let's go back to our code now before displaying the error messages in our browser let's go ahead and see whether it is being generated so let's console.log the errors over here so here I'll just type console.log and let's take a look at this error list so let's type error list over here and now let's open the terminal so let's go to view and let's click on terminal and let's go back to our website and let's click on send and here we have the error list but uh, the errors are actually not being generated over here so let's see what's the problem so here we need to type error dot errors and we need to pass e as uh, the index so now this should work so we are basically checking inside the errors which is inside the error and uh, we are looping through all the items in the array and we are just storing the message inside the array to this error list so let's go ahead and let's go back to our uh, website and uh, let's click on the send button all right now let's go to vs code and here we can see we have the error messages displayed we have name is required email is required and message is required and let's add an invalid name so just add one character and uh, let's click on send and now we can see it says name must be larger than two characters let's add a really large name and uh, let's click on send and now we can see it says name must be lesser than 50 characters and uh, we also have validation for the email so let's just type an invalid email and let's click on send and here we can see name is required and here we have invalid email address so the error messages are working all right now let's go ahead and loop through all these uh, error messages and let's display it over here in this ui so let's close this terminal and let's go to the contact form component and here we can see we have created this state and uh, we are setting the state using set error and we have this error state over here and it is basically an empty array and if you scroll down here we can see that we are getting the message from the response of this fetch call so if you go back to route.js here we can see that we are returning a next response and in that we are adding this message array and here in catch we are checking whether we have a validation error in mongodb and we are just storing the error messages inside this error list array and we are just passing it as a message and here we are extracting the message from the response and we are storing it inside the error so this state right here so now let's loop through all the items inside the msg and uh, let's display them inside our ui so here we have the division for the error message so here let's go ahead and type curly braces and here let's type error and let's see whether we have any errors and if we have any error then we will execute the following code so we can just type ampersand ampersand and here let's loop through all the items inside the error so let's type error dot map and uh, we'll call each of the error e and uh, we will return a div so here let's cut this div from here and let's paste it over here and here inside this uh, div we'll just display the error message so we are calling it e over here so i'll just type curly braces and i'll just type e All right now let's go ahead and save this and uh, let's go back to our website and let's see whether the error messages are displayed so here we have the error messages displayed i'll just refresh this page and let's click on send and we have the error messages displayed let's add an invalid name and we have the correct error messages displayed over here right now let's go ahead and send valid information so i'll just type a name over here and let's add a message 
and let's click on send and now we can see it says message sent successfully and let's go back to the mongodb and let's refresh this page and here we can see that the data is being displayed now the last thing we need to do is when we have the message sent successfully message we need to display it in green color and when we have all the other error messages we need to display it in this red color and when we send the message we also want to set all these input fields to blank so let's do all of that so if you go back to our uh, code and if you go to the route.js file here we can see that when we successfully send the message we are also passing success as true so let's go back to contact form and let's scroll up and uh, here we'll also deconstruct the success so i'll just type comma success and now what we will do is we'll create a state for success so here let's tap const success and set success and let's tap equals use state and by default we'll set it to false and uh, now let's go ahead and use this set success so here let's tap set success and let's set it to the success that we get from here so let's tap success now here let's go ahead and type if and uh, let's see whether we have the success so let's type success and if the success is true then we need to set all these uh, values to blank so if you scroll up here we can see that we have all these states full name email and message so let's scroll down and uh, here let's type full name and let's set it to blank and email and uh, let's set it to blank and message and i'll just set it to blank right now let's scroll down and here we will add a conditional CSS so I'll just change all of this into backticks so that we can add variables and uh, now we will add everything inside curly braces right now we need to set this text red 600 class only when we don't have success so I'll just cut this from here and uh, to add variables you can just type dollar symbol curly braces and let's tap success and uh, let's tap question mark and here you can add the code for success and let's tap colon and here you can add the code for errors so here in the error i'll just paste the code for text red 600 and here let's type text green and let's set it to text green 800 right now let's save this now what we are doing over here is that when we have successfully sent the message we'll just set the color of the text to green or else we'll just set the color of the text to red so now let's go ahead and save this and let's go back to our website and let's click on send and here we have all these error messages in red color right now let's add some valid data so here I'll just type michael and uh, let's add a message over here and uh, let's click on send and now we can see we have this text in green color and we have an error over here so let's see what's the error and here we can see that full name is not a function so let's go back and here we need to use the set full name functions over here so we have to use this function so i'll just change this to set full name and uh, i'll just change this to set email and this one to set message right now let's save this and let's see whether it works so let's click on send and now we can see that it works we don't have any errors and we have this green color over here and all the text inside these input fields are now gone and now if we click on send we have these errors in red color so everything is working all right so with that we have completed creating the contact form using nextjs and tailwind css and for the database we have used mongodb so that's basically it for this video i will leave the link of the source code in the description of this video and if you have any doubts, you can ask in the comments below. And if you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.